Today I'm starting a new series on how to intraday swing trade. The logic is that you should primarily be trading the 30-minute chart. And then when the market is in a location for a reasonable setup, emphasis on location, you can look at the 5-minute chart for an entry. Doing so lets you take one trade a day and capture a significant move. For those trading with prop firm accounts, this type of trade should be your bread and butter. Focus on only taking trades where you can reasonably expect 8 to 10 points of profit, and then close your day once you catch one. If you have 20 prop firm accounts and trade 5 MES each day for 8.25 points, that nets you $200 per day per account. Assuming a scenario where you can do this 10 days a month while being red to break even on the other 10 trading days of the month, you would still make 20 times $200 times 10, or $40,000 each month. However, this is only possible if you are willing to wait for setups where both the 30-minute and 5-minute charts are in alignment. Today on the 30-minute chart, the market made a new all-time high two days ago, then sold off sharply. The sell-off was a bear channel with two pushes down, a sideways trading range, final flag, a third push down, and then a breakout of the channel going into yesterday's close. Context for today's open. Today opens within the bull channel, going into yesterday's close. When the day opens within the previous day's price action going into the close, treat the open as a continuation of that move. The difficulty here is that the bull channel is a bull breakout, which can be difficult for most traders to catch. Bar 1 on the 30-minute chart is a strong bull breakout continuing the bull breakout going into yesterday's close. The market cycle is breakout, then channel, then trading range, and since we just broke out of a channel on the higher time frame, it's reasonable to assume the market is going to test the start of the channel and enter the trading range phase. Since yesterday closed near the middle of the likely new trading range, it is difficult to catch this move toward the top, because breakouts in general rarely give pullbacks. Sometimes the only way to catch the move is to buy below bars, below 2 and 6, to catch any possible pullback, or just trade a lower time frame chart. Other times, the market forms a leg 1, pullback, leg 2 move, which is a safer entry to get long with better risk reward. Since the market did not give me a pullback with good risk reward to get long, I stayed flat during this breakout. Bar 2 on the 30-minute chart brings the market near the top of the trading range, but since the market cycle is breakout channel, then trading range, it's not reasonable to look for a short yet until the bull channel on the 5-minute chart has been broken. Bar 3 on the 30-minute chart When a bull channel, referring to the 5-minute chart, gets broken by a sideways trading range, the high probability breakout direction is in the direction of the prior trend, unless the trading range extends for 20 or more bars. Also, since it is a sideways trading range near the top of a trading range on the higher time frame, it is a likely final flag. Again, be looking for shorts here due to the higher time frame context, but wait for a bear breakout and then pull back to catch the move. Bar 4 on the 30-minute chart Whenever you see a wedge pullback bull flag high 2 at the moving average, but on the higher time frame, the context does not support the trade. Top of a trading range near the spot where the market sold off previously. Then the trade is a scalp, and you have to manage it nearly perfectly for not a lot of money. A more efficient way to make money is to wait for the higher time frame context to support your trade. Bar 5 on the 30-minute chart the market has made a bear breakout with bear bar 27 on the 5-minute chart, which engulfs the bodies of bull bars 23 and 24. It's reasonable to draw a supply zone to catch a retracement. After drawing the supply zone, it's reasonable to focus almost exclusively on the 5-minute chart from this point onward, and short below bodies entering the supply zone until you get filled on bar 33. My personal rule is, if the market has gone sideways four bars after my entry, or otherwise retraced back to my entry price, try to get out one tick beyond break-even in order to get flat and look for another entry. An I.I., 
or inside bar followed by another inside bar, is often a setup late in a trend. I have often said a sideways trading range late in a trend is usually the final flag. This applies to trends on smaller time frames too. An II pattern later in a trend is often a final flag for one more push in the move, and then a reversal. The safest way to trade it is to wait for the final push to complete, and then place a stop limit order in the opposite direction beyond the II pattern. I will show the rest of the chart on the next slide, but the bars you see here are the only ones that should matter to you as an intraday swing trader. After you take your profits on the swing trade, close your trading day and wait for the market to close to begin your prep for tomorrow. On the higher time frame, the market is closing near the middle of the trading range, which is not a good place to initiate intraday swing trades. Tomorrow, I will wait until the market nears the bottom of the higher time frame trading range to initiate longs or near the top to initiate shorts. If the market breaks out above the range, then I will see if it has follow through and a good breakout test to initiate a long for a measured move up. 